so the other night I found this. The next move for GM with its value Corvette nameplate will be to launch a Corvette, a Corvette sub-brand. It will include a four-door coupe and a sporty high-performance crossover to partner with the upcoming two-seater Corvette EV. The new Corvette lineup will be positioned well above its rivals, which is a future trio of electric, of electric Mustangs. What's in a name? When you're a car maker, the answer is everything. Arguably, people buy a BMW or a Benz at least as much as for the name as for the car itself, and the same goes for Corvette. In terms of brand value, Corvette is among the auto industry's most- STOP! 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 Sorry, that was my dog. She was eating some bacon that was on my bed. Don't ask where there is bacon on my bed. I was eating, I was eating it in bed this, in this, this morning. Where was I? I think I was like here. In terms of brand value, Corvette is among the auto industry's most heralded and valued nameplates, and yet it currently only pulls a small percentage of the potentially huge profit. But according to those in the know, this is going to change. I don't really agree with this, honestly. I've never really heard of people buying a Corvette just so they can say they have a Corvette. They're common cars. I doubt the majority of the owners think they're special just for owning one. If you're buying a Corvette, chances are you're buying it because you're passionate about the car. And potentially huge profit? No Corvettes cost like $60,000 at the cheapest. And about 26000 remained this year. That's about $1.5 billion. That's more money than the average person will ever see. That already sounds like huge profit to me. What more do you need? Capitalism, man. We have already seen the new Z06, and there are several more versions of the C8 still to come, including a possible E-Ray hybrid, the revived ZR1, and the even more extreme Zora hybrid named after Zora Arcus Duntov, father of the original C1. Sorry if that's not how you pronounce it. There's also a Corvette EV on the horizon slated to use GM's Ultium architecture. They're still making more versions of the C8, that's always good. I'm not the biggest fan of EVs myself, but if you want an electric Corvette, more power to you. Step 2 of GM's Corvette brand strategy is even more ambitious and far-reaching. Starting in 2025, GM plans to launch a Corvette brand that will also include a sleek four-door coupe and a brawny crossover. Both of these future new vets will be EVs. See, this is what I have a problem with. The Corvette has established itself as a sports car since it was introduced nearly 70 years ago. Why are you try suddenly trying to put the nameplate on things that aren't that? Sports cars are useful image builders and sometimes very profitable. As Porsche moved in the early 2000s the KN, with the KN, is that how you pronounce it? SUV. There's a lot of profit to be made stretching the brand to other vehicle segments. Played intelligently and with authenticity, the name Corvette should be a license to print money. As a point in time of Ferrari and Maserati and Porsche are all offering one or more SUVs, the antithesis to the car core sports cars that put them on the map in the first place, why should a Corvette also consider building sedans, crossovers, or heaven forbid, even pickups? Okay, but when these companies made these SUVs, they did say, this is the 911 SUV, or the Portofino SUV, or I can't think of any Maserati, Maseratis off the top of my head, but you know what I mean. Also, GM owns Buick, Cadillac, Chevy, and GMC, each of which has their own SUVs, and then these two. There's just a bunch of technical stuff. I'll link this in the description if you're interested in that. According to our friend from within the GM Tech Center, Corvette is not just a brand. It's a constantly evolving system paired with a dramatically different user experience. The four-door coupe, think of it more as a liftback, and the crossover add two more values to the mark, mainstream exclusivity and over luxury. Thanks to a delicate balance of functionality and fashion, stats and style, and limited availability fueling high desirability, all three pillars are prepared for pragmatic evolution and subsequent proliferation. The Corvette has all these things as it is, I think. Well, except the limited availability thing, but it's still a good car. I don't understand why it needs to be exclusive. It'll make more money if you make more cars, you know? The aim is not to be Taycan and Cayenne at their own game, but to create three American legends capable of breaking new ground by making the essence of Corvette scalable. To do so, the, evident, the essence must, must at all times be in a state of progressive flux. Our source comments. Here, here. Okay, 
So it looks like car driver is really dick, dick riding for Chevrolet here. Not sure why. This is clearly a stupid decision watering down a beloved nameplate like this. I think I speak for most enthusiasts when I say that the, the, those future crossovers, sedans, and SUVs will never be true Corvettes despite sharing the name. However, if they enable Chevy to, conti to continue to produce real sports cars well into the EV era, then I'm all for it. After all, cars like the like the, like the 911 GT3 wouldn't be financially viable if volume cars like the Macan didn't exist. I get that GM wants these cars to be sporty and performance oriented, but do they have to call them Corvettes? All that does is dilute a special nameplate. Yeah, I don't mind the sporty for performance cars, but there's no reason to call them Corvettes. Ah, uh, yes, because between Buick, Cadillac, Chevrolet, and GMC, I really thought that GM was lacking offerings in the SUV department. I see the argument of, if this is what it takes to save the original, so be it. I get it. But isn't that the point of the Silverado, the Yukon, the Escalade, etc.? It's different if you're more of a standalone company, company like Ferrari, even though they're not independent. But if the brand is part of a portfolio of other brands under a parent company, then surely brand dilution can, can be more easily avoided? What am I missing here? I agree, we have enough SUVs. Leave the Corvette alone. GM is out of their mind. I'm baffled at the thought of that. I've heard good things about the Mustang Mach-E, but every Ford guy that I know hates that they call it a Mustang. We don't need a Corvette SUV too, or a sedan, nor do we want Mustang to be its own brand either. Yeah, I hate the Mustang Mach-E for the same reason. We didn't need a Mustang SUV and we don't need a Corvette SUV. Yeah, I don't think you have to even be into cars to understand that this isn't a good decision. Honestly, I hope that that Chevrolet, GM, that they don't go through with this and they realize how retarded it is. Or if they do go through with it, that it crashes and burns. I hope nobody buys the cars. They shouldn't be rewarded for doing this. But I know most of my audience, well, I have 10 subscribers. I don't know if you can call that an audience, but... Um, like if you're not into cars, I think it's, you don't even need to be into cars to understand that it's not a good idea. But if you, if you still, I'll still give you an analogy, like just in case, let's say this is, this is like, if let's take soda, soda's popular. Let's say that Pepsi saw how successful this one flavor of Mountain Dew Baja Blast is. They see how popular it is. And they're like, oh, Baja Blast already brings in a lot of money because people like it. But what if we made Baja Blast into its own separate brand? And so they made it and well, we'll have regular old Baja Blast, but we'll also have different flavors of Baja Blast. Like, like we'll have red Baja Blast and orange Baja Blast. They taste the same as the, as other Mountain Dew flavors, but they're Baja Blast. See, wouldn't it make sense if Pepsi did that? Of course it wouldn't. So it doesn't make any sense when it comes to cars either! I don't know. That's all I have to say. Let me know what you think in the comments. Even if you're not into cars, how does this sound to you? Alright, well, I'm out.